Good morning to everyone. Good to see everybody. It's great to be together this morning. I have quite a few announcements. This, this um, Thursday is going to be a busy day at Wesley Chapel. We have the mobile food pantry. We have the mobile food pantry at Wesley Chapel. You can uh, pass that word along. We'd like to share with uh, yeah, everyone that uh, we possibly can. Um, usually during a mobile food pantry event, there's 130 to 150 families that are served. If you can volunteer, we need volunteers desperately. Um, the volunteers will park right out in this area, but if you can volunteer, we need you to be here uh, as close as you can to around 7.30 a.m. If you can't be here at 7.30 a.m., we'll take you when you can get here. We have a diagram of how the pantry will work, and we are going to, uh, we're going to uh, uh, have a great time serving others. So uh, if you can help on Thursday, March 10th, any time around, uh, any time there around uh, 10, excuse me, 7.30, usually it takes about three to four hours. And uh, we, we go through pretty fast. So it, uh, it's, it's not a long commitment, but we could use you if even part of the time. Trustees will meet on Thursday evening um, we will send out a Zoom link, but you're welcome to come to the church if you want to. We'll send out a Zoom link. Finance committee uh, meeting will be uh, March 17th at 7. Administrative council will be March 24th at 7. Um, as as you heard during the uh, in the all call this morning, this morning as we receive our morning regular morning tithes and offerings, if you would like to. Um, make a, an offering this morning for the people of the Ukraine. You can place this in a special envelope or you can write a check and put on the memo of the check, people of the Ukraine, if you will, write your checks to Wesley Chapel so we can run them through the account and get them to uh, the place they need to go. I will tell you how personal this is. Laura Alton knows uh, one of the district superintendents in the Ukraine, and this will go directly to that district superintendent to um, procure sleeping bags for people who have been displaced due to the brutal attack that the people in the Ukraine, the Ukraine are under. Um, I got a bunch of words there. <laughs> Uh, the people in the Ukraine are uh, under at this time, and, and definitely that's a that's something that we will reach out and and make a difference in the lives of those people if we can by any way possible. Of course, we want to pray also, but uh, definitely we want to supply anything that we can. Karen is Karen and Trent, and they've got their hands full this morning. I don't think Emery. I think Emery is just. Uh, been really busy lately, but uh, he's there. Emory's out there. Well, they got their hands full this morning. We've got Lenten service schedules. We have upper, some more upper rooms. If you didn't get one, we got some additional newsletters. We have some Lenten banks. Now, these Lenten banks are from the people that supplied our Lenten devotional. If you choose to use one of those at the end of the Lenten season, if you'll bring it in on Easter Sunday or Palm Sunday, either one, we will make sure that those offerings go to uh, the people that supplied our uh, supply, supplied our devotionals. These people go into the fields of farmers who have um, already gone through and harvested crops, and the farmers allow them to come in and glean the leftovers for those who are in need, those who are hungry. Um, During the Lenten season, you can give in several different ways. Um, you, we, have, we have the banks. 
You can make monetary gifts to reading rangers. You can also supply non-perishable food items for the good neighbor pantries. We've got so many ways to give and so many ways to be a part of ministry in this area. Also, the Tri-County Connection. That is the new name for our missional network merged with what was Crossroads Connection. The new name is Tri-County Connection. We're going to have a celebration at Richfield Church on March 27th from 2 to 4. And we would love to have everyone come by. It will be a, it will be a, a floating thing plus a service. And, and I will continue to get that information out on email, but um, lots of information about a lot of things. It'll be a time for you to be uh, to get a look at the, the youth room. It will be a time for you to get a look at the kitchen where the, um, the meals that, that Marsha and, and some of you have uh, participated in serving those meals. Um, you, it'll be a, a chance for you to get a new uh, look at the uh, new kitchen They'll be moving from Mount Zion over to Richfield in the future. So uh, we just want you to make aware you aware of that. That will be March 27th. But remember, uh, the new name for our merged North Stanley Missional Network and Crossroads Connection is now the Tri-County Connection. So we'll be talking a lot about the Tri-County Connection in the future. I want to tell you about the confirmation retreat. We had a great time. Um, I didn't stay the whole night. They let me go about two o'clock, but uh, Kelly and um, Kelly and Martha and Leslie Ray, they stayed out there all night. They had a wonderful time. Kelly couldn't walk yesterday, but um, they had a great, they had a good old time. But um, the, this, uh, the confirmants came in and they had these uh, nice blow up air mattresses and, and Aubrey had, now Aubrey had her a uh, queen size with a, uh, uh, she had a sheet comforter and complete with pillows and everything. She was, uh, she had it going on. She had it, it was as nice as her bedroom. So <laughs> they had some, the, the, the uh, people of that age are much smarter than we were about uh, lockdowns or maybe we just didn't have that available to us. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, we had a great time. So our comp for man's our comp for man's for 2022 that attended were uh, uh, Corbin, Parker, uh, Caitlin Beringer, and Aubrey Burridge. And so they they just had a good old time. So we're we're excited about going through confirmation with them and and working toward that that very special day. Um, when it's a time when, even though they've uh, been through baptism, it's a time that we firm up in our Wesley tradition. It's where we, um, it's just one of those, one of those times that we continue to deepen and strengthen our faith because the Wesley tradition is not a uh, once and done salvation. It is a spiritual journey growing, uh, growing from that point and getting stronger all the time. Let's begin our worship this morning with prayer. Almighty God, mark us, if you will, with ash. The holy season has begun. The cross and tomb draw near. Mark us, O Lord, as one of yours, that we may be not merely like you, but joined to you. We beg a union with you, Lord. You saw the cross and continued walking toward it. You knew exactly why you had come. We want to walk toward our destiny as firmly as you walk toward yours. You saw your cross so clearly. Our crosses hide themselves. They look for us and lie in wait to take us by surprise, to tempt us. It's certainly is the most uncertain thing in our lives it leaves us in so much doubt in so much need of your grace and strength so please lord mark us with your ash and walk with us as we walk toward the crosses in our lives as we worship together 
this time and every step that we take. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the things that uh, we want to do during the Lenten season is we have a Lenten cross. You can you can see it. And, and uh, we're going to ask different people to celebrate the Lenten cross each Sunday to mark the Sundays in Lent. So uh, I've asked Kelly if she would... Uh, if she would be begin this morning with the first meditation for the Lenten cross. And, and I just asked her, so. <laughs> Normally the Lenten cross, the, the purple candles would be lit and we would blow out the candle for each week. But since it's so windy today, we're not gonna do that. We have come together this morning for renewal in worship and as a community of faith. We greeted one another, laughed, and hugged. But now the time of reflection and stillness is upon us. It is the first Sunday in Lent, the season for journeys of the heart. Close your eyes, be still, listen. We are entering on holy time. The Lenten candles have been lit, but over the next six weeks, the light will slowly fade into darkness. For we are retelling the story of Jesus' betrayal and suffering and death. We do this not to be morbid, because in the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, God is revealed in the amazing transformation of death into life, in endings transformation transformed into beginnings, and in dead ends that become a source for new possibilities. This is a sacred center of our faith, the truth made manifest in Jesus Christ, that God is in each and every one of us, quietly transforming us and the world. In his pain and suffering, Jesus speaks to every pain and loss you have endured and offers you the promise of transformation. It's an old story, but it has the power to reveal, to heal, and to redeem. Jesus is at the heart of our faith, in the depth of our souls. He is waiting for us, inviting us to leave ordinary time and follow along with him on the journey that brought him to the cross. Listen in silence, for Jesus is calling you. Loving God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, give us strength and courage to make the changes that are needed in our lives. Open our hearts and minds to your steadfast presence and help us to put our trust in you. Amen. Our prayer concerns, um, I wanted to let you know, um, John, Klutz had a, John Klutz had a stroke yesterday while he was working on a car. It affected his right arm uh, uh, Friday, excuse me, Friday evening while he was working on a car. He, um, he's at Albemarle in the hospital. He, um, he was getting some of the use of his arm back yesterday. It began as a, like a tingle and then, and then he just completely could not feel his arm. But, uh, but they, um, doctor told uh, Julie, they don't term anything as a light stroke anymore, but, uh, but apparently it's a, hopefully it's not a very severe stroke and he will get all the uh, use of his arm back. So keep John in your prayers. He's aching to get home and uh, may not get to come home till tomorrow. So he's at, he's at uh, Albemarle Hospital, uh, Stanley County Hospital. Uh, Sally Gordon is in the hospital with COVID. Pray for Sally. Um, continue to pray for uh, Andrew May. Um, continue to pay, pray, pray for uh, Marsha, Marsha Beringer, um, Sophia Krieger, Aaron Moore, Tony and Regina Smith, Mark Hatley, Everett McBride, uh, Kenneth Trent, uh, Peggy Roseman, Eloise Rudy, James Henry Trim, Logan Andrews, Ronnie Carter, Robbie Woodring, Linda Brigman, Sharon Balfrey, Mona Jean Edwards, Brenda Barefoot, Carol Griffin, Pete Moore, Charlie Flo, uh, Sherry Gallimore, tra uh, pray for those who are traveling, for traveling mercies and safety. Uh, continue to pray for Impact Youth. That's that's going well. Pray for you cop for mans that we mentioned. Uh, pray for, um, continue to pray for health care workers and pray for uh, unity and peace in our world. But uh, remember to pray for uh, those who are 
being persecuted and suffering as, as we reach out in love. Let's, uh, let's go to God in prayer, and we will just pray together silently and lift up other names, and then I will close. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, hear the prayers of your people as we lift names and needs to you. Lord, we pray that you would just uh, be present with us this morning in a special way. Open our hearts and our minds that we might see you in this place and in every place in the world. Lord, we just pray that you'd be present with all those that we have mentioned, those names that we have lifted in our hearts, those that we have in our minds, those needs. We, Lord, we pray that you just be present and with those and that you would touch each one according to their need. We pray that you would just uh, be present with those who are going through chaos in this world so much, Lord. You know the needs, and we pray for your touch. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones around us in our community and throughout the world. We pray as we go through this Lenten season that you would help us to slow down, slow down, appreciate the things around us, listen to your words, listen to your voice, surround us in your love and pour out your grace upon us, O oh Lord, and help us in everything we do and everything that we say to be your hands and your feet in this community and in this world. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we receive our morning tithes and offerings, uh, I just want to remind you this is the time that you can uh, share a gift with the people of the Ukraine. You can also uh, you can also share gifts for any of those other ministries. I was uh, in addition to all the many things that uh, Karen, Trent, and Emery are going to be sharing with you this morning we have um we have crosses if you did not receive a cross on ash wednesday we have elements for communion that they will be sharing with you, you this morning so they're just uh they need sort of a cart to uh push around i believe but uh thanks to them for doing all that and uh let's pray Mighty God, as we remember the strength of Jesus facing the temptation offered by the devil, we remember too clearly how the temptations of food, of authority, and power have overcome us. We've been tricked to, be to believe our wants were needs, and more is always better. May we offer our gifts to you this day with generosity and gratitude. Strengthen us to resist the temptation that would present security or power in anyone but you, O oh Lord, anyone. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. As, as Karen and uh, Trent and Emery continue to hand out things and receive the morning tithes and offerings, I want to begin reading our um, scripture this morning. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Deuteronomy 26 verses 1 through 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land 
that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering army, army, army was an ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. Few in number. And there he came, became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us, by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonder. And he brought us into the place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord, your God, and bow down before the Lord, your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord, your God, has given to you and to your house. And from Psalm 91, you who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them with long life. I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. And from Romans 10, 8 through 13, the word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved the scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame for there is no distinction between jew and greek the same lord is lord of all and is generous to all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the lord shall be saved from luke 4 1 through 13 jesus full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him an instant in all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I will give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, 
it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The other, the other night, Friday night, when we were beginning the confirmation retreat, we um, tried to briefly just describe what um, confirmation meant to all of us and what it means in the United Methodist Church. I was so impressed with Leslie Ray when Leslie uh, spoke, she said that, she just said that uh, simply that she believes that confirmation is God saying yes to us and us saying yes to God in yet another part of our spiritual journey toward sanctification. And I thought about that and I thought about uh, some things I had read in the past that related to what she said and and i thought it kind of goes with our uh thoughts today carl barth the great german theologian once said this yes is what the christian life is all about it is it is about saying yes to god it is what it is what the christian life is all about saying yes to God. In raising Christ from the dead, God has said yes to us. Yes. God has said yes to our yearning for life. God has said yes to our yearning for hope. God has said yes to our need for forgiveness and grace. God has already said yes to you and God has said yes to me. So what are we doing in preparation for the celebration of Easter? I'd like for us to think for a few moments, the next few moments, about our personal and corporate preparations for Easter. Easter begins with God. Will Williman, former, uh, former chaplain of uh, Duke Chapel and and uh, and also uh, District Superintendent Bishop uh, of the United Methodist Church. Will Mil Will Williman has said that ninety percent of the sermons he has preached or heard went something like this: "You have a problem. Jesus is the answer. Repent." Now, we know that's the truth. And Will Williman said, yep, that's certainly true. It may begin with the, uh, from the wrong perspective. It begins with our needs and our problems. In reality, the scheme of salvation begins with God, not with us. Not with us. God's grace and God's forgiveness are possible because God first sent Jesus Christ to live and die and be raised from the dead. The initiative was God's own initiative. Jesus to live, Jesus to die, and Jesus to be raised from the dead. The initiative was God's. The word is near you. Paul says, not, not vice versa. God does not offer a quick fix to endless problems. Rather, God offers an external relationship. We can only respond by saying yes to God's grace to God's gracious overture of love and relationship. And in this yes, we are preparing for Easter. 
we can attain Easter right now. The resurrection life, now and forever. It's attained when we confess with our lips and believe in our heart. To confess means to say the same. To say the same about our sin that God says about our sin. Why then? Why then? Why then when we confess our sin, do we tell God something God already knows? Frederick Buchner reminds us that we confess our sins because our sins cause a separation to occur in our relationship with God. Our confession becomes the bridge over the relational gap. It becomes the bridge that bridges our separation. To believe means to trust in God's saving act in Christ. By believing we accept his punishment as our punishment, and we accept the life that he offers, the new life. Believing means approaching God with an openness for all. Being open to everything that God offers. Believing means yielding to God and yielding to all that God has for us to do. Believing means to trust that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead and that God will also raise us. Believing means to say yes, yes to Christ's lordship over every aspect of our lives. By believing, we are preparing for Easter. Easter is available to everyone. There's no difference between Jew or Gentile, rich or poor. Everyone or anyone who says yes to God, yes. Yes to God in confession and belief can know life abundant and eternal. We all face the same temptations, though tempted in different ways. Some are tempted when they figure their income taxes. Some are tempted when they set their priorities. Some are tempted when they decide how to use their time. And some are tempted in other ways, but we're all tempted. If only, if only we could choose when and where our temptations would come. That would be like Staples, the easy button. Unfortunately, temptations hit us when we're the weakest. They invariably find us at the place, the place where we are the least prepared, and they find us when we're in the place where we're the most vulnerable. But the good news is, Jesus faced them all. Jesus faced the same situations. Following his baptism, Jesus spent 40 days in the desert in a time of prayer, fasting, preparing himself spiritually for the challenges that he was about to confront. During that time alone, Jesus faced significant temptations that could have altered his ministry and changed human history. The temptations that Jesus faced came in three potential areas of weakness just as they often do for us. Yet in each event, Jesus demonstrated how to overcome, how to overcome the temptations that we face. A story was told once about a, a young boy who was sitting in a worship service and as the ushers went back up to the uh, front of the church and placed the offering on the table, he was looking at all that money and he thought, he thought, what are they going to do with all that money? He saw that lying on the communion table, and, and as church ended, the five-year-old boy 
just kind of walked up to the front and he grabbed him a $5 bill. And unknown to him, the pastor was watching him. And the pastor slipped over to him and he whispered to him. He said, very quietly, Peter, don't you think you ought to put that money back in the offering plate? He said, yes, I will. Please don't tell my daddy. Please don't tell my daddy. He will kill me. Now, the preacher knew that the punishment wouldn't be all that severe, so he, he thought that just to tip the father off, he would tell him in private. So he told the father in private, and when he told the father in private about what had happened, the father just stormed out, I'm going to kill that kid. And the pastor said, now, before you act with so much haste, do you not remember a time in your life when you've done something similar? And the father thought about it and he said, come to think of it, you're right. And he responded and he thought about it. He said, just think about it before you talk to Peter. Later in talking to his son, the father related the story of how he too he too had stolen a dozen eggs once. And all of a sudden, in this mutual moment of love, they hugged each other and the boy just cried out. He said, oh, daddy, I'm so happy. We're both thieves. <laughs> you know what? We're all sinners. We're all sinners. Saved by grace. Thanks be to God for that. The realization of this may be the first step in saying yes. Just like our confirmands this weekend have said yes, and they said yes earlier in their lives, and their parents said yes, and mentors said yes, and sponsors said yes, and the congregation of the church said yes. We say yes. Again, and in saying yes to God through believing, we are preparing for Easter. Easter is coming. How are you preparing? Jesus Christ is calling you and me today as we begin our Lenten journeys. Prepare to say yes to him. Amen. At this time, we will uh, celebrate uh, Holy Communion. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death. You destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured out upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death jesus took bread gave thanks to you broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me when the supper was over jesus took the cup gave thanks to you gave it to his disciples and said drink from this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ. 
and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. If you will remove the top layer of your communion elements, you will find the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. If you will remove the second layer from your cup, this is the blood of Christ, the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of him. Now as you go forth from this place, may the dust of the wilderness hold your footprints lovingly, shaped as they are by your hurt, for dust remembers. May the journey into the wilderness unfold honestly, for honesty is the gift your soul recognizes as you. May your time in the wilderness be shaped by space rather than by minutes, so there is time enough for all of you. May the stones in the wilderness cry out your name loudly, that your spirit recognizes the voice that has been calling you always. And may you know this wilderness has been expecting you, and you find between the stones, a promise growing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week, Wesley Chapel. Happy, happy.